Hi, this is Cami from Torch, and today I'm going to show you how to use interactions and scene transitions to create complex animations in Torch using our Hotel Reservation app project as the example. The first interaction I want to show you is the one that makes the hotel larger and causes the ground to shrink below it. This gives you a focused view on the hotel in the second scene. The main trick I used here and I use all the time, is that I change scenes while keeping objects in the same place as I've illustrated here. Notice that it looks like one of the cubes is moving when really we are just changing scenes with the first cube in the same spot. Also note that I have two scenes that look exactly the same, and I'm toggling between the two using the scene pill arrows at the top. Otherwise, they are identical. That's because I made a copy of the whole map scene and removed the interactions to show you how to set it up. If we look at the interactions from the original scene, you'll see that the interaction makes the hotel big and other things invisible or small. To create this interaction, we are going to select the card in our demo scene and then use a select interaction, which is the default. Here, we will start with the simple pieces that we just need to become invisible. With the interaction drawer still open, let's select the cards we want to make disappear and toggle their visibility setting to invisible. This is how we select the end state we want to achieve, or the response to the interaction. Here's a quick test to show that working. Definitely be sure to frequently test your interactions. Now let's figure out what the properties are for the hotel next scene so we can match our interaction response to that. Let's grab the scale first. You'll notice it's pretty easy. It's the same number three times, so we can remember it. It's 3.182. Now let's go to our previous scene, open up the interaction associated with the hotel and add the destination scale property. Looks like it's the perfect size for the demo, but it's positioned a little bit low. It's likely we just need to change the y-axis coordinate to match. So we'll head over to the next scene again and grab the y-axis value. 0 0.7021 is our magic number, so we'll add that to the interaction as well. Looks great. Now let's add the scene change just to verify that we're doing okay. In the interaction, go to Action Responses, select Change Scene, select the scene you want, and boom. It's good to do this early on so you can keep testing and make sure everything's pretty seamless. Looks like everything is lining up great, so let's do the same changes to the clouds. It looks like they just grow and move on the Y like the hotel did, so we're Pretty much just going to repeat the same process, grabbing the scale and the Y axis, like I mentioned before, and just kind of line it up and help create this seamless transition like we discussed before. Having these two pieces be in the same spot really reinforces that it's the items moving, not the scenes changing, even though that's what's happening. Now we want to make the map shrink under the hotel as it grows. This directs focus to the hotel and is aesthetically pleasing. We don't use the map in the next scene, so we can just shrink it out of sight. I'm just going to pinch, shrink, and drag it under the hotel. So now everything is working okay, but it's a bit fast. Let's check out the original scene and see if it's this fast. It's not. Slowing down makes it much less jarring. So let's check out the curves of the original interaction and see what the timing is. Looks like all the timings are sent to one second, but the default is 0.5, which works for most situations, but our model difference is so big that we need to make the change slower. So I'll just change those now. Now 
Next, we just have a few extra odds and ends to clean up. Specifically, small items that we just want to become invisible right away when the interaction happens. With items like this, I prefer to do it right when the interaction is triggered, instead of at the end, just because the other animations are a little bit of a distraction from the ones that just straight up disappear. Now we've got a seamless transition into the next scene. Great! Stay tuned for our next tutorial where we'll be showing you how to create the next part where we animate room detail cards into the scene and flip them around to show you the room layouts. Thanks so much for watching. Now you know how to use interactions and scenes changes to create scale and position animations that always hit their mark. Thanks again for watching. Use hashtag built with torch. Bye.